In this video, I'll go through the steps I use to build a concrete counter and undermount sink. Starting with the CAD drawings, welding the frame and legs, building the counter mold and pouring the mix, messing it up, fixing it, and end with a pretty great result. Hope you enjoy watching. This build is made up of three main parts, the base, the countertop, and the sink. I've added links into the description if you want to jump to a specific section. The large box you see in the drawing is storage for patio furniture cushions, so the challenging part of the build was fitting the sink and plumbing into only 5 inches of clearance. The frame is made with 1 inch square steel tubing, so the first step is cutting it up and welding it together. Once the frame was welded, all the surfaces were gone over with a sanding disc to clean them up. Next was the legs. In order to be able to level the counter later, I added a half inch bolt to the end of each leg to adjust its height. Because the counter will weigh over 200 pounds, I added a washer to each bulb to give it a larger footprint. The legs and supports were tacked into place first to make sure everything lined up. Then it went back and fully welded all the joints. Then to get the frame ready for paint, all the metal was sanded down using a sanding disc on the grinder and then wiped down with acetone to remove any oils. With the frame done, it was on to building the mold for the countertop. I didn't have a pipe the right size to create the opening for the faucet, so I cut out some circles on the CNC and taped them together to make one.
To build the rebar frame, the rebar just needed to be cut to length and welded together. The final step for the mold was just sealing all the edges. Then all the surfaces were wiped down with WD-40 to act as a mold release. This counter is going to take four bags of rapid set mortar mix. Each bag gets one package of set and flow control added to the mix to slow the curing time and give the mix a thinner consistency. As soon as I dumped the mix, I noticed it seemed a little thicker than I thought it should be. Too late now though, so I guess we'll see what happens. I have my air compressor on the shelf under the table, so I figured running it while pouring the mix should do a decent job at vibrating the mold to help remove any air bubbles. Luckily overall it turned out pretty good, mostly just some issues along the edges in a few spots. I had picked up a diamond sanding disc pack with grits going from 50 to 3000 in order to polish the surface. So the first step in trying to salvage a project was to go over the entire counter with the 50 grit pad. Then I mixed up a small batch of mortar adding more flow control to make the mix thinner so it would flow into the voids. It was applied to all the trouble spots and scraped flat to have as little buildup as possible.
Once the mortar cured, I wet sanded the area with the 50 grit pad to remove the new mortar, leaving just the voids filled. Sanding down the whole counter and cleaning it revealed the patch job was a success. Now I could continue wet sanding through the rest of the grits. The counter was sanded top to bottom then left to right for each grit up to 1500. Between each grit I wiped the counter down with a damp sponge. There were still some small voids in the surface from air bubbles and the patch job, so before sanding with the final two grits, I mixed up some sandless grout to fill them in. I covered the whole counter with the grout, and once set up, wiped the excess off with a sponge. I decided to sand the 2000 and 3000 grits dry. It was pretty amazing how reflective the surface was when sanding was done, even before a sealant was applied. And the counter was done. It looks brown here, but you'll see later, it's still gray. Now on to the sink. First I built a hollow area of the sink out of styrofoam, then the wooden mold around it.
now for pouring the mortar. This time I made sure the mix was the right consistency to flow into the mold. To be safe, I used a reciprocating saw to vibrate the mold to make sure there was no trapped air bubbles. The inner surface came out amazingly smooth. The only mistake I made this time was not waiting long enough for the silicone to dry, so it stuck to the mortar. Luckily this was easily removed later with a wire brush once it was fully cured. The standard drain was too long for the space, so it needed to be trimmed down to fit. I glued the sink to the counter with construction adhesive, but wasn't comfortable relying on just that to hold the sink in place, so I decided to bend up some brackets And the sink is done. I thought the sink may stay the darker color after applying the sealer, but it ended up turning back to the lighter color after drying. And here's the counter installed. Lastly, I needed to hook up the drain, but a standard elbow wouldn't fit here, 
so it was back to CAD to model a low profile one and then 3D print it. Well that's it. If you made it this far, I hope you found my process entertaining and maybe gave you some ideas for your own projects. If so, it would really help the channel out if you could give the video a like so YouTube will send it out to more people. If you have any questions, please comment below and I'll try to answer them.